In this video, we're going to look at example one, which is all about solving a problem using simultaneous equations. This particular example has four parts, questions A, B, C, and D. So make sure you watch until the end. It says that two numbers have a sum of 50 and a difference of 26. So question A says, using X and Y to represent the two numbers, come up with two equations that represent the two scenarios above. Now, if you're wondering what the two scenarios above are, they are that our numbers have a sum of 50. So that's scenario one. And also that they have a difference of 26. So this is scenario two. And we have to represent these scenarios using two equations. First of all, if they have a sum of 50 and the two numbers are x and y, sum means 2 plus. So we're just going to go, well, if we add x and y, it's going to equal 50. We are told that they have a sum of 50. The next thing we are told is that they have a difference of 26. And difference means to subtract. And if you're not sure why, if I said to you, What's the difference between 10 and 8? You would say it's 2 because 10 minus 8 equals 2. So that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to subtract our two numbers. We're going to go x minus y. And if we do that, we should get a solution of 26. So we've come up with our two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. We're going to use these equations later on, so I'm going to copy them and move to our next slide here. All right, now, question B says, graph both equations on the same set of axes. So I need two axes. I need an x-axis as well as a y-axis. So we'll label this with an x. And we'll label our y-axis with a y. Now we need to pick some values here. And thinking back to the question, we're told that the two numbers have a sum of 50 and a difference of 26. So I reckon these numbers are somewhere between 1 and 50. I reckon I'll go as high as 50 for the x and as high as 50 for the y. And I think the best way to do that is to go up by tens, like so. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. We'll do the same for the y-axis. 10, 20, 30, 40. And I'm going to need to make some room here. And then finally our 50. Now, if I'm going to graph both of these equations, I'm going to need a table of values. So we're going to have a table of values for equation one. And we also need a table of values for equation two. And we're going to have x values and y values in our table. Now, usually when we fill in our table of values, we put some x values in first, and usually we start at 0, maybe go up by 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Sometimes we start with negatives, but we really don't need to use that for this particular question. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Rather than starting at 0 and going up by 1s, I'm, I'm just going to go 0, and then I'm going to go straight to 50, and I'm going to leave the other ones blank. And I'm going to do that for both equations. And the reason I'm doing this is because we really only need two points to draw a linear equation. And by spacing it from 0 to 50, these points are going to be quite far across, and it's going to make our graphs more accurate. Now, I've just realized that our equations are going to be a, a little difficult to work with. Usually, we like an equation that says something such as y equals, and you've got your number and your x on the right hand side. So we're going to do some rearranging back at question A. And I'm going to subtract x from both sides 
on equation one. This will cancel out x and bring it to the right. This gives us an equation of y equals 50 minus x, which is better. That's what we want here. And for equation two, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to subtract x on both sides. That will cancel out the x. And you will get negative y equals 26 minus x. Now, this is a bit of an issue because you really don't want it to be negative y. You want it to be without the negative. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to multiply y by negative 1. When you multiply something by negative 1, it actually gets rid of the negative. The problem being that we have to do it to every single term on our equation. We've got to multiply them all by negative 1. And when you do this, anything that's positive turns to a negative. Anything that was negative turns to a positive. So our y changed into a positive. Our 26 will actually become a negative. And our negative x actually becomes plus x now. So basically all the signs have flipped or changed. And this can also be rewritten as y equals x minus 26. Basically we've swapped the x and the negative 26 around. And if we bring the 26 to the right, you've got to bring the negative with it. That's why it's minus 26 here. So these become our two equations in question B. And we'll rewrite them. We can get rid of these two. We don't need them anymore. So equation 1 was y equals 50 minus x. And equation 2 became y equals x minus 26. It becomes really easy now to fill in our table of values. Let's start with equation 1, column 1. If x is 0, what is 50 minus 0? Well, it's going to be 50, so we'll get a y value of 50. Looking at column 2 now, if x is 50 now, what's 50 minus 50? Well, that's going to be 0. All right, so let's plot this on our Cartesian plane. When x is 0, y is 50, so that's going to be right up here. And when x is 50, y is 0 down here. And we're going to connect it with a straight line. Let's now move on to equation 2. Looking at our first column, when x is 0, if we substitute it into our equation, we get 0 minus 26. That's actually going to come out as a negative number. It's going to come out as negative 26. We really don't want a negative number. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn my 0 into a 30. I'm just going to do the points 30 and 50 for x. Because I know that 30 will give me a positive number. If I substitute that in, 30 minus 26 is 4. So let's write that. And then looking at the next column, if x is 50, then 50 minus 26 comes out at 24. All right, so let's plot these. If x is 30, we know that y is 4. So when x is 30, y is 4, which is about this point here. And also when x is 50, y is 24. So where's that going to go? When x is 50, y is 24, just about there. And we need to connect these two points with a straight line as well. All right, that's question B completed. We're now going to move on to question C. It says use the graph to calculate the two numbers x and y. Now, to find these two values, we just need to look at our point of intersection. Our point of intersection is here. If we line it up with our x-axis, this will give us our x value. x equals 38. If we line it up with our y-axis, we can find out what y is. y equals 12. Now that we've done that, we should really double check. If our two numbers are 38 and 12, do they have a sum of 50? 38 plus 12 does equal 50. Do they have a difference of 26? Yes, 38 minus 12 equals 26. So we know that we've found our two numbers. Let's now move down to question D. It says solve X and Y algebraically this time to see if you get the same solution as C. Let's actually use our original equations, x plus y equals 50 and x minus y equals 26. 
So x plus y equals 50 and x minus y equals 26. If we're going to solve this algebraically, we can use either the substitution method or the elimination method. I'm going to use the elimination method because my x's line up, my y's line up, and my numbers and the equal sign line up. And I'm going to add them together. x plus x is 2x. y, positive y, added to negative y will actually cancel each other out. I'll make zero. And finally, 50 plus 26 is 76. Now, if we divide both of these by 2, we get x equals 38, which is what we got in question C. Remembering, if we want to find y, we've got to pick either one of these equations. So we'll pick x plus y equals 50 x plus y equals 50. We're going to substitute our x value of 38 into this equation, giving us 38 plus y equals 50. And hopefully you can see that y would have to equal 12, because 38 plus 12 equals 50. I personally much prefer this method, method the method we're using in question D, to solve these equations rather than the graphing method. The graphing method took us quite a long time to do this. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.